All right, good evening everyone. Welcome to the Queensland AVA February branch meeting. Um, nice to see you all again. Uh, we've got quite a few speakers tonight, so we're just going to hook straight in. Uh, any new people tonight? A couple of you? Um, welcome along. Uh, toilets are just down the corridor there if you're, if you're looking for them. Um, normally Jeff's here and it's a couple of dollars uh, each week, but this month's free because he's not here. <laughs> uh, I'll wear that cost, thank you. No, that's all good. Um, that's mostly just to cover the tea and coffee and biscuits, which are all in there. Um, there was a request for sugar last week, so uh, oh, last month, so there's sugar this month. So uh, tonight we, um, I'm going to do the normal infrastructure events and general news. Uh, Wayne was going to have a quick chat about the everything electric slash fully charged event rundown. Uh, Nathan is here with uh, to have a quick chat about his uh, Lotus Europa. Um, Mark has kindly brought in his uh, Cupra born EV and Emilian's here to give us a quick chat about his charging platform, Partage. Yes. <laughs> Righto, so we've got about five people to speak, so we'll get right into it. Every month I uh, run through the new charges that have come online, but firstly I go through the free ones that are in Brisbane. Uh, St Lucia has come back online and it's running at 100%. Um, not traditionally good for it because the others have been dialed down and they seem to last longer, but uh, that's online and as typically getting hammered. So uh, The f new ones that have come online roughly in the last month, uh, going sort of north to south, we've got Burpengary Plaza um, has has EVs just installed um, twin 150 kilowatt chargers there. Uh, so that's nice to start seeing some of these faster chargers coming online. Um, the North Lakes EV has been um, coming online, coming soon for a few months. Um, I put these on every month just in case they uh, do come online, but I mean, it's been that's a photo from 20. Uh, November 2023 and it's still looking like that. Uh, nothing else to really say but um, in the next few slides there's, you'll, you'll, there's a couple of comments um, attached from the plug share um, and I'll show you in a few slides but uh, also at North Lakes there's a supercharger is, is nearly there. It's um, got nine bays. Cleveland, we're still waiting on that. Gary, get on to him, will you? <laughs> You're my go-to for Cleveland, mate. So, waiting since August 2023, that one. Um, Willowbank Raceway just installed. Now, I hadn't seen this before, but apparently there's a few of these around. Um, a 300 kilowatt charger with, with batteries in, installed. So, it, um, apparently, I'm going off this comment and I checked and it was confirmed that uh, essentially there's a 40 to 50 kilowatt grid connection charging the batteries so that when you use this charger you're getting like max speed uh, without uh, requiring a grid set up there so uh, I think that's a great like I know the Toka group have had um, runs out at Willowbank to um, you know drag races and stuff like that so um, interesting to see these because I uh, think places like the Nullarbor and might benefit for, from these type of things where they can put in fast charges where there's like some grid connection and you might be able to come and talk to us about it because yeah. it's, it's a Gold Coast company that's the Yes, well, let me know. <laughs> Is that Billy? Is that Billy? Billy. <laughs> Gundu Windy's been coming for a while. There's a lot of um, angry people. Um, this is becoming absurd. How many months does it take? That type of thing. Uh, what a joke. Someone's taking the piss, that actually says down the bottom there. Um, but it is like, it is puzzling why it takes so long 
for Energex just to approve things that have been built for eight, nine months. Yeah, exactly. Who's governing who? <laughs> Cabarita Beach, just on south of the border at Tweed, or just south of Tweed Heads. Um, EV have brought in, oh sorry, uh, NRMA have brought in a new uh, four bay setup and it has a 360 kilowatt charger and uh, 100, uh, what's the next slide mate? 100, around 150 I think this one is. Honestly I can't remember, sorry about that. But um, what you're starting to see is a move away from tritium. That one there is going right in on the highway, so it will be, uh, that's a BP side I think. Um, didn't have any detail so I didn't mention it. But uh, that's maybe just five, five minutes off the highway in a gap. So there isn't perhaps uh, too many petrol stations and land developed along there, but if you whip out to Cabarita Beach, you can get a, as fast as your car can fill up um, on that one if you get it. Uh, I think, can you just go back one slide? I didn't, I didn't mention that uh, members are 54 cents and non-members are 60 cents. So that's perhaps um, still good if you're... Do you, do you, do you, are you worried for six cents? Not really, but I just wondered. What I'll do, I'll ask um, people I know and... It's got transferable membership? Oh yes. Okay. Uh, I'll get you a definitive answer because I speak to Andrew, who um, has it works for NRMA all the time. Um, he pointed this one out to me actually, so I'll get you an answer next month. Okay, that was uh, most of the new charges, uh, not to be tiresome. So. Uh, that's, this is a, a screenshot of um, petrol versus and diesel prices versus um, charging prices. Um, this has been shown every month for about a year now, so well, let's just move on from that. I don't think any EV charging prices have changed. What's that, mate? Which ones? So we've got an hotel, A U T E L. Hotel, yep. <coughs> the, the trouble that can happen if you miss one month is that I mention it the other month, right? So I generally get it. I generally have a good look. <laughs> I know, and. Um, yeah, I did think whether or not it's uh, at all worthwhile for people who do miss just one month. That I, but I think the amount of charges that are coming online now that, and most people just look on at PlugShare. What's up for you? Uh, Westfield at Chermside closed down their charge. Their charge point, type one. Yeah. 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 And uh, we've spoken to them, and something's happening in the bureaucracy. But who knows? Yeah, uh, early IMEF owner is, and uh, BMW i3 owners, possibly the only people affected by that. What else has type J1772? Uh, there were quite a few Teslas in the Adapters, yeah, yeah. 
Yes, you. I'm sorry about that, mate. But uh, Charge Fox left us, uh, Charge Point left Australia about three years or so ago. So that was uh, an event. That was always going to happen. Eventuality. Um, is that your go-to shopping centre? Or I know you live at Redcliffe, so you might have to go to North Lakes where there's an abundance now. <laughs> but, but you only have type. You only have AC type, but what else do you have? Charter mode. You have charter mode, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You have charter mode for fast charging and type one for AC charging. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Might have to hit Graham up for a conversion to type two. <laughs> Come on, buy a new car. Jeez. All right. Um, Wayne, did you want to, sorry Wayne, um, say a few words about the, the show? Thank you. Um, who actually went down there to Sydney? A few, that's good. What did you think? Was it alright? I thought it was better than last year. It was, it was actually better organised as well. I thought they, last year the queues to get in the front door were, were crazy. This this year it was it was pretty easy straight in. Um, I, I took quite a few pictures and I, and I just made a few notes of a couple of things I thought might be interesting. Um, on the uh, I was there Saturday Sunday and on, on the Saturday when they were speaking to Samantha, the boss of Polestar, can't remember her name. Thank you. Um, the, uh, when she was talking about the Polestar and Rivian report, looking at what what car makers have to do to meet net zero targets, and um, uh, essentially we're so far off target, it's not funny. Um, but Polestar, I don't know if you're aware, have had this um, uh, plan for a while, this ambitious target of P zero, as they call it, which is to build a car with z zero emissions to actually build build the car to get it out of the gate. This is not net zero, this is actual zero. So it's a hell of a target. It's probably close to impossible to achieve, um, but it's, it's kind of good to see that somebody has a target kind of when they don't have to. They, they, they're not being pushed into it. It's not regulation policy. They're, they're deciding that this is what they want to do because it's the right thing to do. So I'd suggest having a look at the P0 target. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. But one thing they have done with the Polestar 2, they talked about the manufacturing emissions of it in three years, that they've dropped that from 26 tonnes of CO2 to 23, uh, just through streamlining their manufacturing, streamlining their, their supply chain, which uh, is, is a, it's a pretty significant achievement. Um, I, I went to a few of the talks, and some of them were interesting, some of them maybe a bit less so, but the, the, one of the ones I found interesting, so the electric Viking, probably everybody knows who, who he is, he was on a talk about... Um, uh, sustainability essentially and, and he was, there was a, a, a the senator, the minister for s something irrelevant, some, some minister he was on there and it, he, he was actually quite good, he wasn't, he wasn't kind of being a politician, he was actually quite good but uh, the electric Viking was just kind of baiting him into because he, he's a liberal this guy uh, and, and so he was getting baited into well this is all, all your administration's fault from 10 years of inaction and all the rest of it and this guy was kind of not biting at all um, but I, I, it, was, uh, it was quite interesting and the, the guy was quite good but one of the conversations that came out of that was around well uh, this guy's, uh, this, this minister's um, electorate is, is in a coal mining area somewhere, Newcastle area uh, and somebody stood up and asked a question, well, what are we going to do for all the coal miners? If we're reducing the use of coal and we're going more renewables and all the rest of it, what about those guys? And it's something that's been on my mind. It's kind of something that's not really talked about. You've got all of these guys who, that when, as the demand drops, people are going to be out of work, going to have to find new jobs, new skills. And nobody's really kind of talking about the training aspect. How do you retrain these guys? Or even how do you, what, what sort of training do we need for, for, for the younger people coming through as they're going through school, college, and all the rest of it? Um, so there were some interesting conversations around that. And um, an another comment on there was on about supporting startups who are doing clever things. There was, there was a woman there from a company that does software for uh, modeling, um, modeling, um, 
uh, wind turbines and you know usage and scaling and all the rest of it and um, she said well we've come from from nothing we had a couple of developers we had an idea we created some software we got some interest we got some investment and now they're they're quite big employing you know 180 people or something crazy like that um, and again it's just something that goes with the training idea that we should be looking for these new novel ideas and, and supporting them. And this should be something that the government is looking for from a policy perspective. How do we actually support these people? Um, and the last two kind of observations I made, um, being English, it's not, not like me to kind of praise the French, but there's a couple of really nice French cars there. And I thought the, um, the, the, it would be nice to see a few more of those kind of European cars, the, the Renault, uh, the, the Megane E-Tech and the Peugeot E 2008 were there. Looked like really nice cars, kind of, not really small cars anymore, but then no cars are small anymore. They're kind of a uh, oversized hatchback, but they're really nice and I think would go well in, in the market here. So it's nice to, nice to see those coming over and we could probably do with a few more. Uh, and last but not least, um, Ford turned up, dropped in a, dropped in a Mustang Mach-E, locked the doors and then left it. Um, so it's like, well, surely you've missed an opportunity there. 17,000 people through the door. You've got a new car in the market. Why don't you have somebody there telling us about it, showing us how great it is, put it on the, on the test drives even. So I thought that was quite interesting. There seemed to be a couple of those that just, there was a few cars around the back of Electric Alley that, that were just kind of locked up, um, just, just there to look pretty. Um, so was, I thought that was a bit of a missed opportunity. Um, overall, I thought it was pretty good. The, the talks I went to were mostly, mostly good. The stands, there were some, some kind of interesting people, some interesting things on the stands, and, uh, and a whole lot of nice cars to do test drives in as well. So I thought it was pretty good overall. Anybody, much, anybody got any quick questions? I, I've only got five minutes, but... Uh. <laughs> um, Rob Llewellyn was there. Anything interesting from him? Um, he dropped into Graham and... Yes, you know, I saw the video, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I saw the video. That was that was a good video, actually. No, um, I didn't see anything especially interesting from here from him. Okay. Are they yeah. doing one next year? Or? Yes, they've already said they'll be back next do year. Each year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I to see so you, you mentioned a couple of the French cars. What was the most impressive car for you there? Like, uh, if you go back a slide, <laughs> the Lotus. Oh, yeah, <laughs> love that. It looks absolutely awesome. I yeah. think he's baiting uh, an answer. <laughs> Thing is, he's talking about his Lotus later on. So. It's just a, a, a queuing <laughs> queue you in. Do you get a chance to get in? And then why do you say Elise at the top? Yeah, the, the Elise, I love the Elise as well. Um, I sat in it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got in, yeah, I got inside, yeah. It was very nice, very, very nice. <laughs> like I said, I haven't got much time, so. <laughs> Well, thanks for doing that, Wayne. No Appreciate worries. that. Thanks, Joe. Uh, well, just the next few months, uh, we've got a few things on. Um, there's on the 23rd of March is a short drive uh, organised by Toka to Mount Cotton uh, for lunch. The I've mentioned before, but on the 1st and 2nd of May is the Solar and Storage Live at the Brisbane Convention Centre. Uh, Gav has offered... Do you want to say anything or yep. come up, mate? Uh, Gav's having his 60th birthday on the 5th of May. I look it. <laughs> I wish. I didn't realise you were 60, mate. So yes. You're right. Look, you looking know. younger than that. Evening all. Hello, uh, fellow members, guests, and everybody online on Zoom. I'm Gav. I've been a member since about October 2018. Really enjoyed all my time here, meeting a lot of great people, smart people who buy EVs, and even smarter than one do their own conversions. So uh, this year, turning the big 6-0, I thought rather than have a small one with just a family, I thought I'd open up to all my wider friends, including those from Aiva. So I've quickly whipped up uh, a bit of a brochure here, which I thought I would share with you at short notice. Thanks for fitting me in. Uh, I thought I'd have an electric go-kart competition. Uh, living down the GC, the Gold Coast, there's a good little... A place called the Game Over has an indoor go-karting track, lefty go-karts, uh, and I made some inquiries, and they do have package party packages. 
So it's through them, it's not something organised by me. So for $99, they have two sessions of up to 14 laps. So I'm still doing a bit of research, but from my understanding, you have eight carts go out around the track and it's up onto a slope and down a slope as well, uh, like a figure eight type of situation. Uh, and the first one who finishes 14 laps, they then close down that session. So you have two of those, uh, and also the food as well, wraps and desserts and cordials in a group booking, minimum of eight, uh, which I'm having to pay for up front. Uh, and uh, it's in lots of eights. So that's for the 5th of May. So anybody who's interested, uh, as per the little brochure I've whipped up, I don't know if people online can see it, I've put together a brochure saying, Gav's Go-Kart Grand Prix. I thought in adding all the Gs. Birthday party, worldwide inaugural event. So it's the first one I've, I like to have a bit of a sense of humour. First one I've organised. So it's for Sunday, 10.30 a.m., the 5th of May, 2024. Is that game over? 88 Singanto Drive, Helensvale. So hopefully those can make it down to the northern end of the GC. Now, I thought just to make it more interesting, I'll have some trophies. So I've got three trophies. One's the Speed Demon trophy. Of course, all those who like to spin around the electric, uh, the carts, uh, I'll have a prize for the fastest or the lowest lap times. So the, each session that goes out, each person, they give a lap time to, they get a printed sheet of their lap time for that session. Then I thought, rather than all speed, I'd have a trophy for Mr or Mrs Consistency. So those who consistently lap within the shortest variation of times, that would be good. And a special surprise one at the end. So those who attend will know what that trophy's for. So I thought I'd make it all very interesting. So now the entrance fee, it's $99, uh, which the entrance would have to pay for. Sorry, I'm not rich enough to pay for all the guests. Uh, but I have an entertainment app. It used to be a book, but it's now an app and they just happen to be on it. So I can get a set, well, all the guests can get a 25% discount. So you get two sessions of up to 14 laps, the lunch, which includes the wraps and food, for $75. So I thought, and three trophies for those winners. Uh, so yes, they also have, it's really a kids party one, but they charge a little bit extra adults. So there is provision, it's really geared for kids' parties, so if anybody has under 13s, you're welcome to attend. Uh, so if you can email me at information that you can provide later on. Well, maybe I'll help you organise yep. and um, an invite, hey? So the, the juniors, a minimum seven years, uh, 75 kilos, pretty big key. Uh, and the adults are 13 years plus, minimum 150. I think that should be okay. Uh, but up to 150. Uh, helmets will be supplied, or you can bring your own racing helmet. Uh, and uh, an adult race is until the fastest cart has completed 14 laps. So it can be up to 14 laps. So I thought uh, that might be fun. So I thought I'd invite you all to that. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Pass you on. That's very kind of you, Gavin, to organise all that. I do want to see the minimum 150 kilo race, though, all right? So. <laughs> um, sumo. Sumo, all right. OK, um, I will help you with that, mate, and I'll organise a, a thing online, and we can celebrate your 60th with you. Um, Nursa on the 16th of June, and at Gympie Showgrounds on the 23rd, there's an event as well. Um, in June. Motorfest. Uh, it's on the 16th of June. It's Electrify Expo. What's that? Oh, that's the Noosa, yeah. That's just how they, what they've called it now. Noosa EV and Electrify Expo. Whoa. Okay. Okay, just a couple of news items and then we'll get into our guests. Um, the government has brought in new ADRs um, mandating Euro 6D and um, this will apply from the 1st of December 2025, which is 
end of next year. Um, now, there's a fuel standard as well that I believe is getting consulted and the three different options are um, out for consultation at the moment. Um, and I don't know how well you can read that, but uh, this column is for passenger vehicles and this column's for utes, light commercial vehicles, dual cab utes, that type of thing. Um, there's three options and that's uh, slow, medium and fast. And basically this has been an extremely long time coming for Australia because we haven't had any vehicle emissions. At the strategic level within the AEVA, they have been um, essentially getting asked as a, as a body for, um, you know, and writing to government for what sort of priorities we'd like to see. And emissions standards have always been right at the top. Um, so it's nice to see that they're actually uh, starting to do something about that. So um, this option here is um, in 2029, there's not much emission available um, for dual cab utes. 56 uh, grams per kilometre is uh, very, very hybrid. Yeah, it's very, it's plug-in hybrid. It's pl it's plug-in hybrid territory for sure. I think. Um, so yeah, so that's um, probably going to kickstart the uh, EV or give it a, the EV uh, uptake another boost. Um, I, I think that generally speaking, people will go in the middle. I assume um, they won't want to be too aggressive and they won't want to be too slow either so uh, th this number is still significantly lower than the 200 or something that we're at at the moment so um, and that's not re that's only when the car comes out of the factory it's probably like that not after five years when it's like bellowing smoke and stuff so hi and we know, and we all know that European manufacturers follow those rules to the letter, don't we? <laughs> all right. The other news is that the Queensland government announced um, 400 buses um, um, to be rolled out over the next um, from 2025. Uh, it was currently 75 on trial, um, but I just thought that was a, an interesting... You walk around the city and, you know, those buses are pretty noisy and, you know, you don't want to walk behind them because they're flogging out smoke. So just another improvement to the city and uh, something worthwhile, I believe. So another tick for the Queensland Government. Can't really criticise them on their uh, adoption of EV policy I think they've been quite good so um, big tick for me all right um, Nathan you want to have a, a chat it's exciting <laughs> to see the buses as well so I worked on a program to do the modeling for 2400 buses here in southeast Queensland um, and what it would take to put um, electric, electric buses into the depots so uh, it's really great to see that they have uh, They've gone and put, what's that, about a fifth? Something like that. A fifth of all, uh, yeah, of the buses are going electric by 2025. You good? Yeah, steady. As batteries typically are. Righto, ladies and gentlemen, how are you all? Good. Yeah. Um, so, this is what takes all my time and effort at the moment. Um, that and working on trucks. So uh, you might remember about 13 months ago, I, I, I let you in on um, my conversion that I'm working on. So this is not what my car looks like. It's what it's hopefully going to look like, something like that. So yes, yes, it's, it's all it's on the it's on the um, what do they call it? Um, the board. Yes, it's all. Uh, yeah, see, it's probably it's probably the closest thing to it, actually. So Lotus Europa is a is one of the very first rear mid rear engined 
sports cars ever made. Um, it's known for being an amazing handling car. It's known as being the closest thing to a Formula One on the road in the late 60s. Um, and I have a 1974, one of the very last ones made. Um, uh, it is going to probably be this colour over here, Aston Martin Caravan Pearl. And these are the kind of things I'd like to try and come out of it. I want to really be really lightweight. I want to stay the same curb weight that the vehicle was originally, 700 kilos. Um, I want it to be super um, efficient, so I'm aiming on basically 100 watt hours per kilometre if I can. Um, it's also got the best um, aerodynamic profile of any car of its, of its day as well, so the CD is really super low. And, you know, before I was thinking about having a Tesla drive unit and having a, like an AEM style dashboard, these are the sorts of the things I was thinking about, but if we flick on, um, this is what it looked like. This is what it looked like when I picked it up. So. Um, pretty, pretty much in bits, and then I whip the body off and off the top of the chassis. So you can see there, there's a fiberglass body, and um, and the chassis. It's kind of got a T piece at the top. You'll see more pictures of this, and it's got like a Y shaped, and that was the uh, the four cylinder Ford Lotus um, twin cam motor in it, and a and a transaxle gearbox on the back there. Anyway, uh, whipped all that out, sold it, um, and done done a bunch more work to it since. Um, so if we go to the next one. Um, so on that progress, 13 months ago, these were the things I was looking at. So I'm on, I'm on target and on track to sort of keep that 700-ish kilos, still going for that kind of hill climb car um, and those other, those other targets. But a 350-volt um, uh, system, well, there's a little change to that. Still aiming with the CCS2 charging. That's an aim, but that's a phase two aim. Um, Tesla drive unit, that's gone. And um, the AEM uh, control system are probably gone for that and gone and changed that. So what that's moved on to is, click, um, uh, a battery pack for which I have an example of here and we'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, so it's, uh, I'll have 25 kilowatt hours, so at 100 watt hours per kilometre, I've got about 200, 250 k's. Um, uh, these are little chassis batteries and we can talk more about those and I'll have 10 units of this. So, so this is one module where two batteries to a cooling plate, um, and so there will be five bits of one bits of these, and the whole lot will weigh 125 kilos, which is, you know, not too bad when you're taking a motor out, and you're taking a fuel tank out, and all that sort of stuff. And and what's really exciting is that, that in within that, at a pack level, it's 200 um, uh, 200 watt hours per kilogram, which when you look at energy density of batteries, that's ah, pretty good for a for a you know a pre-packaged. You've got all this aluminium chassis that the, the cells are all sort of contained in, so. It's not bad, and it's got a water cooling system, which I'll show you more of. So carrying on, um, I have chosen to go with a Nissan Leaf. So thank you to Francisco. I have a Nissan Leaf that I bought um, that I have pulled the motor out of, and you can kind of see here, the picture's a bit crap. But I have now mounted my Nissan Leaf um, uh, ZEO. So it's a 2012 Australian delivered car, it was knackered battery. The rest of the car was really good, so I kind of felt bad that I was pulling apart a really good car, but we're doing all sorts of things with it. We're, we're, we're putting the motor into this, we'll do some stuff with the batteries, um, we've got already done some stuff with the other parts of the car. I've helped various Leaf people with other bits. The tailgate's been sold to somebody who had a busted up one. Um, water pumps. Everybody wants, to, wants, a, wants a leaf water pump. I had to keep at least one of them. There's three on board. Um, anyway, so mounted really low on the chassis. I have now mounted that in there. I've modified the axles for CVs, um, for which I'm about to get those shafts made up and whatever. Um, I've got a cooling system designed, and I'll show you some more bits of the cooling. And um, it's going to have, the whole car will have the same power. So it's got 80 kilowatts. It's about 120, 25 uh, horsepower, that's what the car originally was, but it's got double the torque that the original motor had, um, and uh, and obviously, you know, it's going to be instant torque, so I reckon it'll go all right. Um, and then next one here, so switching from this AEM stuff, it's really expensive, it's American made, all that sort of stuff, and um, it's fine, but there's a, there's a, uh, a Brisbane organisation that um, Francisco knows pretty well, um, that they do a really lovely little, little you know, um, tablet. Have a new one that coming Wider, okay, so basically double wide or something like that. Maybe that's too big for my car, but anyway. And, and, and basically, two things that are great about it. One, you, you feed it canned messages and it does stuff. And two, um, all of the dashboard, unlike the AM, 
is basically customizable. You can make it do whatever you want. There's lots of different choices, dials and bars and numbers and all this sort of stuff. And you can sit there for as many hours as you want to waste changing the way it works. So that's a really good opportunity. And they're a Brisbane, Brisbane team, so you know, it's nice to do something local. When's he going to be ready to uh, be on the road? We'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> Let's, let's have a little look at more of the challenges that we've got going on. So here's the shell. So as you can see, there's still a long way to go. I feel like I'm up at the bottom of the valley right now. You know, I've just about, I've stripped down the entire chassis. Um, oh, sorry, the, the entire um, shell. Um, I stripped down the chassis and I started sort of placing the motor in with, um, with made up parts, you know, so the, the, the brackets that I've got in there are, they're all kind of jigs, if you like, and they'll be jigs that I've popped in there and then we'll take them away and I'll make them out of the right material at the end, nice weld them up and all that sort of stuff. It's all fiberglass, so has anybody got any fiberglass experience? Because I need a hand. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's lots of things. I mean, it sat out in the sun and it was that black original colour and so it's had quite a lot of heat damage. There's a fair bit of, of cracking going on, but there's no major holes, there's no major problems. Um, but there's also holes that need to fill up. You can see things like the dots in the bumper. I'm not going to have any bumpers to try and take another couple of kilos out of it. So I have to fill those up. And things like the, the top here, there we go, uh, that's the fuel fillers. Well, I don't want them either, so I'm going to have to fill them up. So there's going to be a lot of work there. My aim is to stick the, uh, the charging port underneath the, uh, underneath the um, number plate at the back there. So um, you won't see it. It'll be behind there. And if you go to the next bit, I'm, I'm really looking to modernise the car. So I'm not interested in in original. Actually, nothing in this car is going to be original. I'm not interested at all because I think in, in 50 years we can do a lot better and I'll talk about some examples. So these are aftermarket taillights from an FJ Cruiser, you know, the little kind of thing. And I, I spent ages looking at things like Suzuki Jimny's and the Cruisers and anything that had a, a light aperture that was about the right size for what I'm looking for. Anyway, found these chopped the brackets off, turned them around, glued them back on, and now they fit in there nicely, as you can see here. And then I'm going to build, this is a template for a carbon eyebrow, and I'll, I'll, I'll do a, a cut out a piece of plate carbon and, uh, and put an eyebrow around it, and it'll look pretty friggin' amazing. Because at the moment, the originals are E-type Jaguar lights. And I've got a couple, and they're kind of a bit average, and the new ones are 400 bucks a side, so not doing that. And this looks better. So anyway, there's that. Go to the next slide. Um, chassis stuff, so a bit better shots of the motor. So you can see, you know, the sort of the motor. So many of the listen leafs you see, there's a kind of a different top to, the, to, to them. They've got a bit more of a domey top. Um, but the early ones don't, and some of the stuff is actually out of it. So the whole entire thing is even lighter than the later ones, and the early motor is actually stronger than the later ones as well. So, you know, winning. Um, and you can see the chassis all in there. Uh, sorry, it's all in the chassis. So I, I've, I've cleaned a lot of things up. Like you can see the this is the trailing arm down here. You can see the, uh, the suspension's all in place and all this stuff. But I'll pull, pull the whole thing apart again when I'm worked it all out. It's all understood, and then I'll blast and finish the chassis as well. So I had some great advice from team team members in this room that said build it first, pull it all apart, finish it off and put it back together. So that is the plan. And, you know, it's coming together. You can see it there. But this was the first time about four weeks ago that it rolled up. You've got things like, um, just on this side over here. So you can see here we've got the, the lower trailing arm. Um, that's, that's had to, you know, be sort of uh, redone. And then also, originally, the axle is, um, was a, a, um, a member that holds, that holds the tension for the, for the lower, uh, sorry, the upper or forward control arm, so I've now had to build my own control arm because I'm going to have a CV joint running from the, the transmission to the hub. So lots and lots of goodies to work on. Let's go again. And I'll just touch on some cooling and some brakes. So the original radiator itself weighed seven kilos. The fan that goes with it is another three and a half. Um, I'm going to do the whole lot for two. So, you know, the whole point, the radiator here is out of, an old, out of a new Polaris, so we don't need as much radiator. The old one's this thick, the new one's this thick. It weighs um, nothing, it weighs a very, very small amount. So I'm saving in the order of, of um, six or seven kilos. So those are the sorts of things that I can, can bring to reducing, the, co uh, reducing the, the weight as we put other bits of weight in. 
um, but using some clever ways with some shrouds, because if you pull air, more air better through the radiator, you'll get more out of the radiator. So those sorts of bits and pieces. Um, uh, you know, just started to mount the, um, the brake pedal, so I'm not going to use original brake pedals, they're garbage. I've got a Wilwood brake pedal in here, um, and, you know, um, and I'm going to have uh, a master cylinder that'll sit directly on the front, another great piece of advice from in this room. Instead of using something like a, a Tesla um, brake, brake booster, which I was going to use, I'm actually just going to use direct brake pedal. So um, that'll push a bar that goes through the chassis, and off the front here will be a, uh, a master cylinder, and then you'll just have to push a little harder. But that's fine because all Lotuses of this sort of age, era, and size have all got direct drive. Same with Beetles and Combis. None of them have vacuum. So same concept. And it'll actually be a Combi master cylinder is the one I found that's the right one. So these are the sorts of things that I'm doing. I think as I sort of show you the last thing around the batteries, batteries. Afterwards, we can have a look at this. I've got that. You see how the panels open on the side? They've got these. I've got one of them ready to open out, and you can have a look at it on the inside if we'd like. They are, um, they're called a VDA355 battery that's quite common in, in all sorts of things. You're putting them in leaf replacements now. Um, it's, a, it's a form factor of battery size and shape that, that is being used for all sorts of things. It's quite, it's quite versatile, and it's almost a perfect spot between the firewall where, where you sit in front of and where the wheel arch is. It's actually about 400 long and this is 355 so I've got plenty of space. And so there'll be five packs like this across the back wall. Here we go. And, and I'll just give you a bit of a, uh, this is the schematic of what I'm looking to do. Um, and across each one of these packs there will be a buzz bar which I have made a mock-up for there. And I've actually gone and bought, so going through this whole thing, right, how am I going to make a buzz bar? Well, I can try and buy one. I can go to someone in Alibaba to try and make them or actually go down to the copper supplier and make my own. And that's what I've done. I've gone to a copper supplier. I have a metre and a half of copper, which is going to do all of those little orange loops at the back. And then again from, I don't know, Timu, Alibaba, whatever, I bought proper buzz bars. And all I'm going to do is knock a 90 degree bend in them and it'll work here, and so I'll end up with this. So if you flick on, you can see the cooling system there. My aim is to then bring it all together with an MSD, and then out of here, out of the middle, and the reason I'm coming out of the middle is because then I've got accessibility. If this is you know, the left-hand wheel, the right-hand wheel area, this is gonna come out the middle. Come out of here, we've got a fuse. The fuse, the fuse will go to um, out of the, oh, these are the contactors, sorry, these are the contactors. Um, it'll come out into the, the rest of the system. And next one is, flick on. Oh, on the, uh, yeah, so then we've got the BMS, which will kind of plug into the, into the whole thing. And you'll see on the end here that each of the batteries come with their own tapped BMS all ready to go. So there's a, con there's a um, plug there. They've just sent me the plugs with the, with the tail on them and, and we'll turn those into, because the taps go already onto the cell, so we don't have to worry about all that malarkey. We'll just set them up. And, um, and the whole box, which will be about 1,300 wide, um, I'll use a, um, the stuff that bus floors are made out of, is a, is a, um, a, a, com a compound of, of fiberglass, basically. It's called thermalite. When a bus burns to the ground, the only thing that's left is the thermalite. <laughs> And so I get a bunch of stuff, a bunch of that from work, and um, that will be the base plate of my battery battery box, uh, which I think I'll split into two on that side and three on this side. It's a little bit heavy, but we'll work it out. And uh, you know, I'm sharing this kind of thing because, and you can see what the voltage would look like. Each pack's um, 60. The whole lot will be 300. And um, you know, I'm sharing this because probably is a good example of just how much work goes into this. And secondly, that, you know, please feel free to uh, uh, let me know what I'm missing or got wrong or whatever, because I do not know this stuff super well. It's my first conversion ever. But, you know, um, there's, a, there's a lot to go at. And I think ultimately the other thing that's exciting here and scary is that the batteries are cheaper than all the electronics. So three grand, two grand, 
and then I bought the I bought the car and pulled the motor out, and you know that was a seven thousand, seven eight thousand dollar car for which I will probably not recoup all all the, all the money. But the whole entire battery pack set was five or six grand if you include the plates. So when you have a look at what's expensive, the batteries are really expensive. No, they're not. It's all the other stuff that's expensive. Um, uh, compared is, is I guess is where it is and and I have 25 kilowatt hours of brand new batteries with really great density for 5,000 bucks so I think it changes the equation for a for a, a conversion I think um, if that's something that you're interested in doing um, I don't think there's another slide is that the last one oh and next steps this is what I'm gonna do and this is again this is not what it looks like right now this is kind of a bit of a, an idea of how it might look like I will be doing a carbon dash like this I will be having a sports wheel like that which I already have I will have an interior that's you know um, modern and funky and probably you know drawn from my many years at Aston Martin but there's loads to do loads and loads to do um, and uh, final question to be answered is when would I get this done by Look, I, had, I drove around on Australia Day and there was lots and lots of really lovely cars out for the day. It was a nice day and people were driving their cars on Australia Day and I thought to myself, you know what, I'd really like to have this done by Australia Day 2025. The car has its 50th birthday in April. It's not going to be then. Um, Australia Day 2025, it's a long shot. Um, but I think it's possible depends on how much time, effort and money I want to put into it. This is the whole thing, right? You know, if I gave up work, spent all my life savings, yes, I would make it by Australia Day 2025. But, you know, whatever. There we go. Um, so, I hope it didn't take too long. Um, oh, it thinks I took too long. There we go. <laughs> Any questions? Or you can save them till afterwards and we'll walk around with the battery and have a look at some stuff. Because there's other people who've got to talk, and I'm going to talk about a Cupra. Was there any questions? I think you're better off just saying Australia Day and not saying what. Which year, one? Right? I didn't, I'm going to, Australia Day. Didn't say which one. Um, yeah. But anyway, there we go. Thanks, oh, mate. I really appreciate that update, Nathan. Um, yeah, we will speak that. It doesn't seem like 13 months ago that you actually gave the initial talk, but you looked back, eh? Yeah. So. I guess it's been a little while since you bought the leaf, right? So time flying at the moment. Um, I've become a million. Uh, a million's here to talk to us about his partridge business. Um, and I'll just adjust the cameras. All right, yeah, I'll just wait a few seconds. Um, yeah, I think it was good, good um, hardware-focused presentation, which is good, and now you'll have a, more of a software one. Um, so as John mentioned, um, I started to um, work on that project a few months ago. I'll explain to you why. Um, and I came up with that platform, uh, which is basically to offer a charging solution for our electric cars. And that's, you know, the name of the platform is Partage. All right, so just a, a quick introduction. Um, my name is Emilien Perico. I thought I would write that here because, you know, <laughs> as John said, it's quite hard to remember Bonsoir. when you just... Bonsoir, yes. <laughs> Bonsoir. Um, so I live in Brisbane, Carina High, to be precise, with my wife and two boys. Uh, I'm also a software engineer. I've been um, writing software for about 20 years now. And I'm um, the owner of a Model Y since October 2022. Um, yeah, so that's basically you know the, the focus I want to talk to about, uh, talk about the electric cars, obviously. So, you know, when you think about um, electric cars in general and EV owners, I imagine most of you are, you have that expectation of freedom, right? Like you, you start say, I'm not going to go to the petrol station anymore. I'm going to go drive around and and. For the most part, it's true, but there is a major pain point, which is you know that reality where, when you travel, um, it's not that easy to find consistent and reliable charging spot, right? Um, I think we get there in terms of availability. I would say options, but you know quite often it's limited. You have a few stalls, and you say, "Yep, someone is charging." I have no idea to know how long they're going to stay there, so. Um, 
to me, that, that's the main problem. That's, you know, sometimes a bit stressful because you want to go and travel. But you always have in the back of your mind, I'll need to plan and know where I need to charge. And that plan doesn't always go as expected. Um, to me, that's the main reason I still have my backup second car as a normal internal combustion engine because sometimes oh, it's going to be too much of a hassle and you know, I, I'm, I'm not ready to plan that trip with my electric car. Um, and to be honest, that's the main pain point. Like, you know, that undermines the joy of having an electric car to me. Um, and I thought, you know, maybe there is something I can do about that. I'm a software engineer. Uh, I see there is a strong uh, sense of community amongst EV drivers. You, you see that, you know, on Facebook groups and things like that where quite often you see someone saying, hey, I'm, you know, somewhere and I don't know what options I have to charge my car. There is always someone ready to help. Say, hey, you can charge at my, at my house if you want. Um, and I really, you know, that's, that's the thing I like the most about the EV community. You know, we, we still feel like we are in the early days and we want to convince everybody that's the right move. Um, so again, I thought we, maybe we could leverage that and propose a different solution, um, you know, with that software background. Um, oops, where am I? Yeah, cool. Um, so what is Partage? So basically in simple terms, it's a community of home charging station for EV drivers. So the idea is you contribute, meaning you offer you know, your charger at home for other people when they're traveling, and in return, when it's your time to travel, because you've contributed, you have this um, you know, give and receive model where I say, because you contribute, I want to have options and charge my car at other people's house. Uh, so that's, that's the whole principle of the model. Uh, when I say contribute, of course, the main idea you have when you say contribute is propose your charger, but um, you have other ways to do it. Like obviously, you know, subscribing to the platform is one of them. Uh, referring friends is another one. Um, I plan to have different ways to, uh, you know, get reward for your contributions. That's, there is a point system, and I don't know if you can see it from the, from the phone screenshot here, but uh, the whole platform is based on the point system where you contribute, you get points, and in return you use your point to charge your car. So it doesn't cost you money to do it. Obviously down the track you'll have a subscription model, but I'll talk about that um, a bit later. But at the moment the platform is completely free. The reason being, uh, you know, it's what we call in software a marketplace model where similar to Airbnb or Uber, you need host and you need guests. Like, you know, it doesn't matter how good the platform is. If you have no one uh, pro proposing the charging station, there is no interest for, for a member. Um, and so for that reason, I think the best way to um, grow the community is to provide, you know, that platform for free until people feel like there is a real value for them. There are options to charge in a lot of different places and that's where I feel like maybe now it's time for me to get, you know, some sort of return on that. Uh, but that will come later. All right, so I'll do a demo uh, very soon. Just a few things I wanted to point out in terms of, uh, you know, what, what makes it a bit different. Um, so first of all, you know, obviously uh, the, the major uh, concept of it would be to provide more options uh, when you go out of the city. Um, I know, you know, being in Brisbane, when you go south, you kind of have a lot of options. Oh, I wouldn't say a lot, but, you know, enough options to travel. But when you go up north or even west, it becomes very, uh, very quickly difficult. So hopefully with time, you'll have people providing their, their home to charge and say, at least have an option to, um, to stop somewhere. Um, the other part is the, the peak period. So we, we see that more and more where you have an option to charge, but when you go there, there is a queue because it's holiday time or long weekend or even, you know, um, late afternoon and that's why people come back from work and want to charge. Um, I've, you know, I, I'm from France and I have a, fr a friend who spent time in France lately and we were talking about the experience there and said the lack of option is not the problem anymore. They have chargers in a lot of different places. The problem is the lack of availability. Very often those charging stations are full. Um, and, and, you know, even if you see they're a bit ahead, you know, in Europe compared to Australia, they still have that problem of lack of availability. Um, and, you know, coming back to... Um, the uh, Everything Electric conference there, in one of the talks they were talking about, 
I think they expect you to have about a million electric cars by 2027. So I, you know, it's hard to say how correct that prediction is, but even if we don't reach that, that's going to be more and more painful to, to find charging station. Um, one of the other aspects is the booking, and I know that's some of the feedback I got from other people as well. The main problem today is you can't book when you're traveling. You hope, you know, you look at the app, sometimes they offer real-time uh, status, but by the time you get there, say, oh, now there is a car, and I don't know how long I'm going to have to wait. Where well, here with the platform, you book a, what I call a charge pod, which is, you know, a charging station basically at home. It's, it's your time, like no one's going to be there when you arrive and it's going to be you know, f only for you. Um, there is an approval and cancellation process, so of course a host can approve or reject booking request. As a guest you can cancel if you're, you, know, you have a change of plan or things like that. The final part is privacy also. You know, that's something I really looked at when I looked at competition and other options you know, worldwide. A lot of platforms are not paying a lot of attention to data privacy. Um, you look at PlugShare, for example, you don't even have to be a member to filter points and have the exact address of people there uh, without even being a member of the platform. Um, so what I did here is I don't expose your data um, with the community. So basically, you know, when, you, when you register your charging point, your charge spot, um, I have you know, some math done so that it gives an approximate location in a 200 meter radius so that you know, the guest would have a sense of where it is approximately. Uh, but we don't expose the private information like phone number or names or exact address. It only comes when the approval is done by you being the host. And that's why we exchange information to make sure you, know, uh, you can go there and, and know the exact address. Um, yeah, finally, data stored in Australia, also a very important point. Um, you know, I, I don't know how much you know about software, but basically you are subject to the law of the country where the data is stored. So if you store your data in, in the US, for example, you have to follow US law. And US law is not as protective as Australian law. So um, to me, that was also an important point, thinking you know, we're in Australia. We know Australia provides a fairly strong data pro protection when it comes to privacy. Um, and having the data stored here in Australia provide that sense of uh, protection. Cool, so we'll do a demo. Um, basically, I would just want to do an end-to-end -end where I subscribe, uh, you know, enter my profile and do a simple booking uh, on the network. I'll use a um, demo platform, obviously not, not the real production environment. Um, that's the website and the, and the QR code if you want to you know, follow it on your phone at the same time if you know, you're already convinced it's a good idea, you can do that. Uh, but I'll do it from, uh, from a, a test environment. Uh, here we go. Um, so what I'll do is, you know, obviously I'm going to play the host and the guest, so I need two, two windows to um, you know, pretend I'm two um, people at the same time. Um, so I'll start from you know, that window where I'm new to the website. I'm not going to go through the website. You, you'll have a chance to look at it on, you know, at home if you want, but I already explained the, the main principle. Um, so you just you know, click Join Now. Um, as you can imagine, it's a simple, or I would say standard, um, registration process. Oops, missed the microphone. Uh, so I'll create a new account here. Didn't expect to have the microphone in my hands. So it's been, um, all right, so you've been verified, and you just go to your basically your dashboard. So, yeah, sorry, we, we don't know how fast the network is. You know, I'm connected from Leslie's phone, so obviously it's not the same experience when you're at home on your, on, on Wi-Fi. But um, you, you get the idea. So that's that's your dashboard. Um, you know, you can find what I call charge spots, uh, which is the map. Uh, where you have charge spots available. Um, you know, hopefully one day that will look like this. Um, <laughs> on the production environment, uh, just to, on a parenthesis, I released, so I started to work on the platform back in uh, September, October, and I released the full platform just before everything electric, so about two weeks ago. Um, and there is, uh, I think, 12 uh, charge spots already in two weeks, so you know, it's getting there, like, it's one step at a time. Um, there is about 30 members at this stage. Not everybody is a host. You don't have, you know, it's your choice to be a host or not. But um, 
you know, obviously I'm trying to get traction now, but here we have, you know, testing environment with a lot of uh, chart spots, so you can click on them uh, and that provides the information about, um, you know, the, the charting point. So that will tell you the type of um, socket or plug you, you can use there. So wider sockets probably not the, the, the you have a standard PowerPoint. Um, you can click on those ones, the fast charger that tells you the plug type. So type two would be, you know, obviously the, the main one now, but you can also have type one. That tells you if the charger, the charging cable is provided or not. Some people will provide it for you, some others won't. And the cost in points, the cost per hour of the charging session. Uh, so that's basically how it works here. Oh yeah, one, one side note, you know, every time it says Adelaide here, you don't have the exact address at the moment, and that's on purpose. Um, so I need to complete my profile to book a charge spot. That's the minimum requirement, so I'll go back to the dashboard. Um, just a quick note, so complete profile, we're gonna get there, add a charge spot, we'll do that too. And then you have your booking, you can refer friends, I'll show you that one quickly. Um, Basically, referring friends is just sending a text or an email or sharing on social media, um, and you get points from that. So that's also a nice way to get uh, more um, points to charge for free. Um, all right, so let's do the profile. So I'll start with, um, let's call Elon Dusk. I'll go with, uh, 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 yep. Yeah phone number, um, you know, you don't have to drive electric um, if you just want to be a host, but you plan to have an electric car soon, so you might be, um, you know, uh, want to um, accumulate points already, but uh, let's pretend I have a Genesis um, GV70, you can add a bio if you want. So you save your profile. <clears throat> yeah, that's a bit slow here. Um, so you can see the points you know, you already have 40 points because you've completed your profile and we're gonna now add the charge spot. So you're at home, um, let's pretend for that, you know, example here that um, you have a wall connector, so you have a 7.2 kilowatt <coughs> charger. In that case, say, yep, I provide the cable and it's a type two. So th there are, you know, a few guidance here to explain to you how it works, but I'm sure you're all familiar with this type of information. Um, and then you can type your address. So I'll do, yeah, Edward Street, Brisbane, that's a good one. Um, you can add notes. Um, one of the things people told me is they, they would like to know when they go and charge somewhere, what's nearby. And they always expect it's near commercial centers and things like that, but some people told me, I have children, I would prefer to have a playground nearby. I don't really plan to stop for lunch. Um, so this type of information can be useful where say, yeah, I have a nice park or playground or you can, you know, maybe you live next to the beach and you can go to the beach. Um, access instruction is, you know, how you access the charging spot. You might have lockbox or garage or driveway, but um, at least you can provide information here. Um, so let's say park on the driveway. And that's all you need to do, really. Um, and again, adding a charge spot is not even mandatory. It's up to you to do it. That will give you more points. We already have 120 points. So just to give you an idea, you, we've just done that. We haven't referred people. We haven't hosted anyone yet. Uh, hosted anyone yet. But um, you can go to that charge calculator and say, OK, I have 120 points. Oops, maybe. Um, and you know, I plan to charge on the you know, wall connector at 7.2 kilowatt. That gives you, you know, close to three hours of charge. Um, obviously, you have way more if you go to a standard socket and you plan to charge overnight at someone's place. Uh, you'll have, you know, an overnight charge just because you joined the platform. Um, of course, down the track, I plan to have different ways of accumulating points, but the main, the core principle is you host, you get points, and then you can use them. Um, all right, so let's find a charge spot. Um, I told you we would do a booking, we, we're getting there. Um, so what I'll do is, I'll tap Karina Hyde, which is my house, and try to find it. Um, that's gonna be in here. 
That's the one here. So it says, yep, you have one in Carina High. That's going to cost you 43 points per hour, and the charging cable is provided. So say, yeah, that seems pretty good to me. Um, you can go and say, um, I want to book that one. So we're going to do it from you know, 9 to 10 tonight. Doesn't really matter. You understand how it works. But um, that, you know, obviously, if I stay a bit longer, let's do that. Let's do, I plan to stay two hours because there is a night park and you know, some restaurants around, so I'll stay there. Um, you click Submit, and um, that's basically your booking request. Um, so what we'll do in the meantime, am I connected to the internet? Yeah, it's getting there. So I'll go to that one. Uh, just to make sure we are not confused, I'll change the view. Is this the time, do you? Yeah, so Basically, there's two reasons I did that. At least you're not confused with the other one. So I'm going to play the host on that view, uh, being the one who received the booking request. And it's also to show you that obviously you can use that from your phone. That's the whole point of it, because usually you'll be on the road when you want to request a, a, a charging spot. So you can obviously you use it from your phone. Let's go back. So yeah, the booking request was sent here. I can go and view my bookings. So I now have a booking there, uh, it is pending, um, and the reason being the host has to approve the booking request. Um, one note, I, I don't think, you know, I don't want to uh, bother you too much with everything, but you receive emails, you know, the first one was to welcome you to the platform, thanking you for being a host. Obviously, not everything happens in five minutes usually, but, um, um, you know, and, and of course, I received two emails because I use host and guest in the same email accounts here. But um, you know, this one says, "Oh, you have a booking request. You receive that by email. You can go there and approve it." Um, this one was the confirmation of your booking request. So let's switch to this one. Um, if I go to bookings now, uh, and I switch to the host view, and you can see I have this pending, uh, which tells me you'll get plus 86 points because it's a two hours charging session. Um, the only thing I know so far is Elon D is the person who requested the booking and he has a Genesis G, um, GV70. Uh, so I can decline, obviously, <laughs> we're gonna prove it here to show you. Um, yeah, so I've approved, if I go back here, obviously receive an email, say, hey, good news, you're ready to go now. Everything is set. You can go and, um, uh, you know, when you're ready, go to um, do your charging session. So now it's been approved. You can see I have more information. Uh, I have the exact address now, which wasn't the case before. I have the, uh, my name and phone number in case, you know, you need to contact the host for whatever reason. Um, and you have the instruction to access the, to access the garage or the driveway, whatever it is. So that's, you know, end to end. There is a few more things you can do on the platform, but the, the basic is there where you can book whenever you want and uh, use your point. So does the homeowner get those points, 86 points? Yes, correct, so yes. it costs the driver 86 points, but the homeowner gets 86 points. Correct. So when they drive, then they can use whatever points they have at other people's ends. Yes, that's right. So. One thing, and it's good you say that, it's good timing actually. Imagine you have solar on your home, or, or you know, maybe, I don't know, you provide, you, let's say you have those AGL plans where it's eight cents a night and you let someone charge during your night. Getting those points is quite cheap for you. And it doesn't really matter when you're gonna use the points. Like it can be middle of afternoon where the person is paying more for electricity. For you, it's the point system. Uh, and there are different reasons I use the point system. And a lot of people tell me, why don't you do like Airbnb, where you just pay every time? Uh, yeah, so th there are reasons I didn't want to do that. The f well, honestly, the first reason was I wanted to do that for the community, and I was worried that by opening the model to everybody, I would attract people who are just there to make money and are not even EV owners. And I wanted the platform to feel like it's trusted, um, I don't know if you guys know, there is a website called Home Exchange, which is a similar principle where you swap houses. And they do uh, similar things with points because they, you know, they want that, like I said before, the receive and give type of model where you tend to be more um, respectful of things where you also 
give away your house. So that's the same principle here. I feel like people, you know, the EV community will say, yeah, I respect, you know, where I'm going because I also do it for my home. Um, also, the point system makes the transaction way easier. You don't have, you know, to pay every time to get a receipt. If you cancel, you need a refund, you know, all those things. Well, here it's just points. You cancel, the points are back. And, you know, points is just, if you have a problem, I'm like, yeah, I can give you points. If, if there was a miscommunication with the host, you know, it uh, makes things uh, a bit easier. Is there a rough uh, points per kilowatt hour ratio? Yeah, so the way I've done it is one point is one kilometer of range. Um, so obviously you accumulate points quicker when you have a fast charger at home and you consume your points faster when you, <laughs> you fast charge. Based on what efficiency? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, exactly. So I'm not, I'm not at that point yet. I, I, know, I know down the track I want, there are a few things I would like to, know, to do. Uh, one being uh, tracking for real the charging session, you know, based on OCPP and all those stuff. At the moment, it's just based on you book two hours, I charge you two hours. If you stay two hours and 10 minutes, I'm not going to know that. Yeah. Um, I also want, you know, it, once the community is growing, uh, some locations will be more popular than others. I'm thinking, for example, someone who lives next to the beach or next to a stadium, and like imagine if, uh, that would be my dream, I can book a, a parking not too far from Suncorp Stadium, I can charge my car, I know I'm going to get there, you know, stay there for three, four hours for the game. I'm going to have a... Three months ahead? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Um, and you know, you know your car is safe because it's at someone else's house, not in public, sta uh, public parking. Um, so th those people will have probably more requests than others. So I want them to have a multiplicator and say, I want to accumulate points faster. And that will be fair enough because they have more demand. So, you know, obviously I needed to start somewhere so it's, it's yeah. more basic at the moment, but that's, w that's one of the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> We'll probably open up to, for questions. But yeah, it's one more slide and then we're oh, yeah. getting to questions. So um, obviously, and that's kind of what you're doing, I, I really want to, I don't want to decide what features are the most important because of course I have a lot of ideas, but I really want to understand what the community wants first. So any feedback is welcome. Once you join the platform, there is an easy way to contact me. I really want to do things, you know, I have a few ideas like host and guest reviews, identity verification to add an extra level of trust, um, things like more options to get points. Recurring booking would be another one because I imagine I could connect people like who lives in apartment and don't have a, an option to charge at home. Imagine if I connect a person like this with someone not too far from their home with a house and they can book two, three times a week overnight to charge. So that would be an option too, but I really want that to be community driven really. What, what's the most important things you need for the platform? Um, oops, missed that one. Um, yeah, just social, um, you know, it's just there in case you want to uh, follow what's going on. If you subscribe and you don't use it, it's completely fine, like it doesn't cost you anything. The list you, you can have is emails from me when there are new features, you know, on the platform really, so it doesn't cost much. Um, I touch on the subscription system, so down the track I plan to have that subscription which will be, you know, once a year charge. But I, I need to have that growing community to get there, yeah. Obviously I don't want to charge people if there are only 10 charge spots available. Once you get a hundred, you know, and options, like, yeah, that's some, that seems interesting now. Um, open yeah, questions, questions exactly, yeah. Uh, I've got a few to start with, so. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Open it up to myself. Um, what do you, do you have tracking of the car as it's for the homeowner to see it as it's coming towards, um, like you do perhaps with an, you can see where an Uber is when you're getting picked up? Ah, yeah, no, not yet, no, no. Um, and, and the reason is because Uber has a contract with Uber to get a tracker on their car, which is not, I don't think I'll get to that point, okay. really. All right, just an idea because, like, perhaps someone doesn't arrive and they book 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., like your example, Yeah. and it's 9.05, where are they? Like, are they turning up, do you know what I mean? And perhaps it's good to know that, well, they're maybe just around the corner or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I'm a homeowner and I have uh, 
my electricity costs me 30 cents a kilowatt hour and another homeowner nearby is 20 cents a kilowatt hour, um, we're going to get the same points, aren't we? At the moment, yes. 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 So um, uh, I don't know whether it can be sort of built in to uh, accommodate that somehow. Yeah, and this one... It, it, there will be variable costs. Yeah, and it's also a tricky energy. one because as you know in Australia it's quite complicated to advertise, oh, I'm, I'm selling electricity for a profit. Um, I, I talked to um, the EVC, Everything Electric, and, and you know, they said, Victoria, you're totally allowed to do that. You can you resell your electricity, but in other states you need licenses. So having the point system overcome that problem, yeah. uh, but it's, it's flat at the moment. So it's up to you to maximize how you can get points, obviously. Yeah. 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 Um, any benefit for early adopters that put their yeah, so in longer term subscription plans? They've been there I, from early days. Yeah, I think so. At the moment, like like I said, it's completely free, which is yeah. a, a good a, a good incentive. Um, I also want it's not there yet, but um, you know, when you do a charging session, you get an email saying thanks, you know, for your contribution, and you can send me feedback. But you don't get rewards for feedback yet. But I plan to say, hey, if you're an early adopter and you contribute, you tell me what you like to do. I'll give you point for this. Yeah. All right, let's go with a few questions. Yes. Uh, two questions. Are you looking at, Chad, oh, that's right. Are you looking at um, people having a charging system like the Tesla one at home? Mm -hmm. How about those who just have the old um, uh, wall socket? Yeah. The wall socket, yeah. And th this is an interesting one. And you know, my, my goal is not to compete with the fast charging network, obviously. It's a, it's, it's a different type of use case. Um, I think where there is a value in the platform is charge at destination, really. That, that's the way I see it. You know, you drive, maybe along the way you'll need the fast charger because it's a long drive. But eventually what you want is, you know, what we do when we charge at home, right? We, we don't stay next to the car waiting for the charge to be done. We go to sleep, we, you know, do something else, and that's the plan here. It doesn't really matter how fast it is. The point is, you plug it in and you do something else. Um, so hopefully, you know, I have a PowerPoint at home, not even a fast charger. Um, our plan to have one just for the purpose of the, of the platform, really. But um, if you find, you know, a charging point where you're traveling and you say, I can stay there overnight, you'll be fine. Like you don't need that fast charge. Um, so there are use cases where a fast charger will be more interesting, but not always. That's, that's the way I see it. You also said the model would be excellent in more rural areas. Yes. Rather than, say, like Brisbane or Sydney. Yeah. But it still has a lot of... I just think it's a very innovative idea and worthwhile exploring. Yeah, thanks. Go for it, Nathan. Uh, that's, that's a question of more. I mean, I actually think it's a really good opportunity in the likes of an MEB. Yeah. So I stayed in a few MEBs and then and I said, oh, can I charge them because I'm going to be there for a while? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. Let me get you back south for you. But I think there's an opportunity here for those sorts of folks to, to have a, a platform. And I don't know, you know then the currency is points, it's a points value, it's a value, it's a value, it's a value, it's a value. Yeah. And I know the Airbnb, I had the same experience. I used to plug in overnight, right, when it was the early days. But more and more you see hosts saying, hey, you're not allowed to charge at home, which is fair enough. But, um, you know, eventually a few people told me, if you're big enough, maybe Airbnb would be interested in, you know, connecting with yours. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm not there yet, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. You're um, using your charging, you're getting the uh, power, but you're also getting the car. Yes. Because uh, you've got a uh, charge on the street, you can't cost the car. Yeah. I disagree with you that um, in the city, everyone wants a park, so there's opportunity also over the place yep. for that charging, particularly the charging line. Yeah, and I know it's tempting for me to open the model to everybody from the get-go, saying you don't have to be an EV owner and you could, you know, make profit by just offering your parking spot. 
I, I might get there eventually, but I, I really want it to be a platform where, you know, it's a trusting platform in a way. Like we do it for the community first. And I know, you know, in, in software in general, you always hear that community is the most, you need to build that sense of community around your product. And to me, it was like, but there is already that community. Like, I don't have to build it. Like, the EV owners are helping each other. So I think I should focus on them and provide a value to them before thinking everybody can become host and make money. Um, I also feel like, you know, compared to Airbnb, like, no matter what you do, you already pay for your, uh, you know, your house. And giving away a bedroom doesn't cost you more money. Where here, you have to pay for the electricity. And I don't think the... The value you would get, like you would need to, to host ev almost every night to start to see a significant profit every month. Maybe people will be ready to do that, I don't know. Especially, like you said, if it's a parking spot at the same time, you, you know, you're willing to pay not just for the electricity, but also, you know, if it costs you $15, you stay overnight at the place. That's still cheaper than the public parking spot. So there are, there are different ways I can evolve the platform. And I didn't want to write the vision and say it's going to be like this. It's more, let's see and adapt depending on what people feel they need. Yeah. We'll just do these two questions, and then um, we'll move on to Mark and his car. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's actually a good, because it, I didn't see it that way, but um, I imagine down the track we could have two subscription models, where one is a bit more expensive for people who are not contributing and say, yeah, you don't contribute, that's fine, but you pay a bit more to get points, where if you're a host, well, it's a bit easier for you to get points, so similar. Yeah, yeah. Now that's, uh, I don't know if I should call it tax <laughs> on the website. Like fuel excise. Yeah. What's that one? That's great. Airbnb is a very good example of a company that's going to be able to get the electricity. So you can make money while other people charge? Yeah. I mean, you see if you're going to get rid of the solar It's not a bad idea. Um, I would be open to that, like, on long, long road. But I don't think I can put it my house on there. And I, I would probably use this if we put in my if you have like a Google crazy Because I want to know, in, like, you, you turn up at some and the charger of the truck is destroyed, people don't care, they just yeah. move around. They've ripped out two chargers on the coast because people can get crap and just threw the table on the ground every day um, and now it's gone. Um, and it wasn't quite popular, so I would use that. I want to know the rating of this person. Yeah. They're in an emergency, probably late at night, I don't want them to be using it. And then the other question is, I don't know if it's like, it's just, I have to be home. There's no one going to see the people activate it if I'm not there. Yeah, not at the moment, but yeah. I mean, obviously, if you have a remote control, you know, garage door, or some people have just a carport and they don't have to be home, say, hey, you just park and, and, and charge. Yeah, and I, it, one thing I did at Everything Electric was talking to all those, you know, wall connector provider, and most of them now, they have apps where remotely you can control when the charger is available. So imagine I come to your house, say I want to charge from 9 to 10. You can say, hey, at 10, you just disable, and even if I step it longer, you won't, you won't get charged for it. Um, yeah, the review, the review is probably one of the things I want to do. Identity verification is another good one. You could say, as a host, I only accept people who have been verified on the platform. Um, at least, you know, you know they are legit citizen and things like that. I, I don't think I'll have a lot of problems amongst TV owners, but eventually... Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, look, it, you know, it's early version. Like I said, released two weeks ago. I wanted to get out there and, and start to build some sort of momentum. Like I need to get tractions now and and kick the engine. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll put the word out on our Facebook page and we've got a lot of um, Queensland members, so um, I saw a few people already signing up tonight. Oh, that's so, good. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. Um, yeah, it, it, look, if you, if you don't want to do it yourself, like, feel free to talk about it and, you know, at least, you know, yeah. talk to heavy friends who are interested. Um, thanks, Leslie, for, you know, the opportunity. It was good, good to talk to everybody. All right, thank thanks, you very so. much. Um, <laughs> Thank you for that, Mark. Um, you're going to have a few words about the uh, Cupra and then we'll break for tea and coffee. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Yes, that's, that's my uh, Cupra born. Um, first new car I've, I've ever owned. <laughs> um, Been a big uh, VW Golf fan for probably 12 years. I uh, had three over those that time, all second hand. One was just a normal one that had the first one that had a shared uh, Audi engine in it, I think. Um, that got destroyed in the big hailstorm in 2014. Uh, then I ended up buying a GTI, a red one. I had far too much fun in that. I think I got about three, three speeding tickets and one, you know, going through a red light ticket. So the wife said, that's it, you've, you've got to get rid of it. So I ended up getting, the last one was a, a VW um, diesel, um, which I had up until I got, I got this one. Uh, and the only reason I got rid of that was because um, I was doing plenty of miles with work and the diesel was really fantastic for, for those purposes. Um, but when I retired, I was you know, d just doing more small trips and the old, uh, there was a leak in the turbo and it's going to cost about $5,000 to fix it. So I thought, well, that's it. It's time to get a new car. So um, in my mind, I wanted to um, probably, I was always leaning towards getting a Golf GTI. Um, but uh, I, I knew what my wife was thinking. That's you know, a 65-year-old man flying around in a Golf GTI is probably you know, not really that prudent. <laughs> so, this might so, have more power, though, does it? Or? Um, this no, no, it's got it's about equal. Equal, but it's 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 pretty it's pretty heavy, yes. <laughs> so um, when John and I went down to the um, what, what was it called though? Fully, fully charged, actually, they had one of these cars here, and I thought, oh, this is very interesting. I'll, I'll look into this, and I ended up taking one for a... They gave me one for a weekend. Um, I had to talk them into it, of course, to um, allow, allow me to do that. So I picked it up on the Saturday afternoon and dropped it back to the dealership on Monday morning, and as soon as I drove it, I was hooked on it. I just loved the way it, you know, it steered, the way it pointed, you know, the rear-wheel drive. Um, yeah, so it wasn't long before I... Lucked up the courage, and my wife's negativity was put to, put to side, and <laughs> slapped down a deposit, and here it is. Uh, what I like about it, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, as I said, it just ha handles well, the, and the rear wheel drive. Just, it's just, it's essentially like an electric Golf. It has, you know, all the characteristics. Um, there's, there's a few negativities, um, you know, like modern cars with the driver assist rubbish that you know, there's always beeping and flashing that, you know, annoys me. Um, the, um, you've got to be a, a bit forceful with the doors or else they, they want to stay ajar and the, and the front doors especially, sorry, um, the front doors especially, the pivot point, you know, where you grab the door, actual door to close it is, is right up close to the pivot point, so you've actually got to be a bit forceful with, with that. Um, the windscreen wipers too, um, because they do the funny this type of action, being a right-hand drive car, I think that there's like a four-inch gap on the, you know, being a right-hand drive side of the car compared with only like an inch and a half gap on there because, you know, obviously it was designed as a left-hand drive car. Um, other than that, I love it. Uh, yeah. Does it have a spare? No, no, it does, <laughs> does, it, does not have a spare, no. The most pertinent question... <laughs> Every car. No, I, I didn't even ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have enough, uh, you know with the test car you can use your phone as a key, do you have a similar principle? No, uh, there's not, interestingly, there's not an app in avail available in Australia for the car. There is in Europe. So how do you manage your charging sessions? You know, when you're at home, how do you know that the car is fully charged? Uh, I've got a wall charger. It's an ocular brand. Uh, and it's, it's got an app with it, yes, so I manage it that way. 
Um, How do you know when it's fully charged? Yeah, it stops charging. <laughs> yes, it, it just stops. No, but you know what I mean? Like, the Tesla asks you can see. I don't have a Tesla, so, like, why do I, why am I interested when it stops? No. When my phone's charging at night, why do I care what time it's fit fully charged? Uh, for me, I remember charging my Tesla in the beginning. I yeah. wouldn't restrict the window of charge. But after a while, I knew that by 6 a.m. it would be fully charged. So I restricted the window to maximize you know, the electricity cost. And I only knew that thanks to the Tesla. I... Would that be solved by um, timed charging that's generally available on, uh, in the infotainment options? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I mean, most modern cars have that now. Uh, a lot of EVs, or especially mine, like, don't, it did come out with an app to start with, but I don't know if they necessarily all have apps these days, but generally the setting for charging option in the menus. So, but uh, yeah, when it gets to 100%, that's when it stops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it depends, like, yeah, especially if you're on that off-peak tariff type of situation. Sorry to hijack you. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah, you can set it to like midnight to, to yeah. five. I, I think most cars would have that. Does your car have that? Yes. 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 Yeah. Normally I just, you know, when I come home from gym, I'll plug it in and leave it on for a couple of hours. And I usually only take it up to 75, 80% anyway. Leave it that. You should have. You've got a limit uh, percentage limiter. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think I haven't checked every car, but I think most have that. Mm. So. Mm. What about variable reset? Yes, it, it does. Love. That's one of the things I love most about it. Is the yeah the, the regen. Mm. Do you have strong, medium, and? I oh, know it's either on or off. On or off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when it's on, it's strong. Variable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two speeds. Do you have one of the option for one pedal driving? We're just driving with the like, accelerator. No. no. And is there like uh, different trim levels? Uh, there is. Yeah, that's that's got the um, performance pack and the interior pack. The interior pack is you've got the nine-speaker uh, Beats yep. uh, stereo. It's got the what is it? The marine recycled um, plastic. For the seats, yeah. that's one of the down things I don't like. I, I, would, I would have preferred like you know, faux leather or vinyl, yeah. um, but th that just came with the package. Um, is it a four seat or five seat? Sorry? Is it four or five seat? No, because it's got the larger battery in it, it's only a four seater. Mm. Okay. There's a question there, mate. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, no problem, no. Are you doing that out of uh, battery degradation? Yes, yes. Concern? Mm. You probably wouldn't have too much issue with an 82 kilowatt hour. Um, it's best practice to kind of sit in that 20 to 80 uh, range. Mm. But, uh, yes. Do you know the chemistry? No. Yeah. We can look it up. He's not already on the website. Look it up, mate. If it's NMC, then. Um, yeah, but it, they're, they're just generic in brand. It's an at all. It's no, but all that labeling is rubbish, right? <laughs> they, they all have almost the same. It's just that some person is a bit more of this in their chemistry, and some yeah. a bit more of that, and, and then they just give it a label. That's, yeah. yeah. And it's just what they're willing to warranty it as. Yeah, so. But L LFP and NMC are surely different. Right. They're, they're different, but, but they're 90 whatever percent the same. Between the chemistries? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so. Paul Star recommends 90% on their cars, and they're all NMC, not yeah. NMC. Yeah, yeah. And just on the warranty, the car's five years and the battery eight years. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't say there, yeah. 82. Well, you get 77. Yes. Yeah. But 
I thought there was a piece. Yeah, but um, Jared, I found that I'll never tell you what's in the battery because that's their secret sauce. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, so that's just branded as something the consumer will accept. Yes, Jeff? Yes. Sorry, man. Are you doing more driving now that you have an um, no, no. Oh, that, uh, a couple of times I have just taken it out and thought, I'm going to, you know, just go out and do a, a Sunday drive in it, which I, uh, which I never did in my old car, so, yes. Yes, you? Did Tesla uh, tell somebody, the one the friends got anyway, tells them that what their, uh, what's happening with their tyres? Uh, what they need to what they need to do about their tyres is what other electric cars besides this one tell you how your tyre pressure is. I think I don't uh, know. My my bib certainly tells me both. <laughs> <laughs> I would say my my electric scooter up front tell me tyre pressure and tells me when it could I tell you what, you um, because you live around the corner from me, I'm just going to let you borrow my car one weekend and you can, you can go for a drive. And what I'll do is I'll like lower the pressure of one of my tyres and you can see what it looks like. And then, yeah. and then you can assume that all EVs so and modern you, you cars are Does your car tell you what your pressure is? Modern cars, yeah. They do? It's, built, it's, it's, pretty, much, uh, it's pretty much built in these days. Mm. It'll tell you when it's going down. It's so. annoying in winter because it goes off and they're only like yes. one PSI less than they need to be. Just drive for five minutes. So. What is the weight that's set their weights? I think it's 1800 kilo. Sorry. Oh, 1960. 1960. Needs to go on a diet. It's a weird driver. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. All right, any other questions? Um, I mean, it's on display, so we can speak as much as we want after this. Uh, yep, jump in, John. Just if anyone's interested, I've got a colleague who's moving overseas in a month's time. He's got two EVs for sale. Uh, if you know anybody who might be interested, there's a 2020 Honda Kona Electric Highlander, 29,000 on the clock. Good car. And, uh, and 2018 Hyundai Ionic Premium was 64000 on the clock. So they're both for sale and got to be gone within a month. So. <laughs> Make an offer, you can't review. The original 28. Can you pass it on to John to send out to us? Or where would it be? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, it's just a couple of flies up there. Did, did you want to upgrade to a car that has um, tire pressure? <laughs> As usual, uh, we're breaking now for tea and coffee. Thank you to all our speakers tonight. Uh, milk's in the fridge and ch chocolate Tim Tams for, and sugar for uh, Sir. Um, all right, thank you very much, guys. Uh,